GTA 3. Because of how old this game is, I was expecting it to be quite edgy, but honestly it wasn't that bad. If you were to tweet all the dialogue from GTA 3 and all the dialogue from GTA 4 to see which one gets you cancelled first, GTA 4 would be cancelled three times before GTA 3 is even done with the YMCA references. Of all the GTA protagonists, Claude is the biggest psychopath. He's a fucking maniac. That leather jacket isn't just for show. Only the baddest motherfuckers wear leather jackets like that, trust me. Usually in Rockstar games, the antagonist will come at some point and come and antagonize you. And I'm just thinking the whole time, why can't we just kill this guy? In GTA 3, it's the opposite. At one point, the Mafia Don decides he wants to kill Claude. The Mafia Don is fucking dead by the very next mission. Every so often Claude will kill someone, and it makes no fucking sense. Only Claude knows why that person is dead. I remember this happened twice. I said to Claude, Claude, why the fuck did you just kill that person? At one point, the Mafia is trying to kill Claude, but he gets saved by this nice Yakuza lady named Asuka. Asuka was very cool, I liked her a lot. Then to say thank you, Claude kills her brother and makes it look like the Colombians did it. But then because Asuka didn't realise it was Claude who killed her brother, they keep working together. Asuka then captures a Colombian, who she blames for her brother's death. And Mr. Speed just watches as she tortures him for like three missions straight. And he doesn't say a thing, he just, he just lets her get on with it. Then eventually, the Colombians come, kill her, and Claude doesn't even fucking acknowledge it! He just steps over her like she's nothing! He's, I fucking hate the guy! <laughs> At the start of the game, Catalina shoots Claude in the face, doesn't she? She's meant to be portrayed as like a bad guy, but honestly, I think she might have been onto something. Claude's kind of a piece of shit. Someone probably should stop him. I love you, I, I really do, because you're such a big, strong man, and that's just what I mean. Now, and my hair is ruined! I mean, can you believe it? This one cost me 50 dollars. What?! Jesus Christ, Claude. That is a lot. So yeah, Claude is fucking insane. But you know what else is fucking insane about this game? The game play. I'd absolutely recommend doing the ambulance missions for the infinite sprint. It will make your life so much easier. It's also just a lot of fun doing those ambulance missions. It's quite impressive how just driving around a lot can be a lot of fun in this game. The vigilante missions are even better actually because there's no pressure to do it all in one go. You can just fuck around, you can go for a swim, <laughs> go back to the hospital and then just continue whenever you want. They were a lot of fun. The rewards for these missions are very helpful too, I hear. They do spawn at your safe house though, so good luck finding them. Look at this definitive edition model. You've got extra texture here that isn't meant to be there. Her eyes, for some reason, they made her lazy eyed as fuck. It's kind of cute, honestly, but what the f why have they done that? She was not like that in the original. And look, there's no texture glitch here either. She's meant to be like a kind of menacing, kind of sexy Yakuza leader. I feel like this encapsulates that. I don't know who the fuck this is. She looks like someone who shouldn't be in public without supervision. This GTA is much more British, I think. There's even a radio with just some British noise on it. <laughs> this station is hilarious, by the way. It's only 25 minutes long, but in that time, he makes Pokemon canon within the GTA universe. He gives out his phone number five times and his email four times. But because the game's so old, he doesn't have that number anymore. So now it's just some random guy's number who everyone rings whenever they play the game to see like, oh, is this DJ timecode? The only reason he got away with it is because nobody can fucking understand him. The ammunition guys are British too, which I'm not sure really makes that much sense. And that also explains why everything is so fucking grey. Going to the ammunition for the first time, and then making an effort to memorize its location, and then forgetting because you're a fucking idiot, and then finding it again, all becomes this big process where, when finally you know exactly where the ammunitions are and can just go there whenever you want, it actually feels like an accomplishment. Imagine that, just driving to the gun shop being an accomplishment, rather than just plotting a waypoint on the map and then just driving there. I'm not saying future games shouldn't have maps, I'm just saying, having no map, it was surprisingly fun. It's literally easier just to drive the fucking plane on the road rather than fly the fucking thing. You flew for two seconds! Look how much of an accomplishment that is. The driving in this game, I don't know if they changed it between this game and the next two, but it just felt fucking mental to me. I felt like no matter what I did, every so often I would just end up in the bottom of a lake. 
And Claude, obviously, because this is such an old game, he can't fucking swim. Too many guns in his pockets, eh? I don't mean that in a bad way, by the way. I thought the driving was really fun. And if it's not fun for you, at least it's funny for the person sitting next to you. No! He's not wasted, his head's still above water. He's not fucking wasted, he's fine. If a car lands on its hood and you don't get out of it fast enough, you're dead. Mission over. All your weapons are gone. It's scary. And so every crash sort of leads to a feeling of like, oh shit. Uh. I don't know how to describe it, I'm just making noises, but you know what I mean. I swear to god, cars spend about a, as much time on their hood as they do on their fucking wheels in this game. The cops in this game are fucking mental. Every time I'm being chased by police and I look behind me, they're just flying horizontally across the screen. It makes no fucking sense. They're terrifying. Now, more hits from the 60s. 1760s, that is. <laughs> By normal game standards, it's a good length, but by GTA standards, it's quite short. I was prepared to spend much more time in this world than we actually got. So my biggest critique would be, it ended way too soon.